Hello and welcome to February's unboxing. We're gonna unbox all the stuff that you guys have sent me. Now, I wanna mention this is the 11th unboxing video I've done. It's hard to believe it's been that many. And I got a bunch of great stuff in February, so let's dig right in. Okay, the first package of the month comes from Johan Silkens uh, from Belgium. I just hope whatever's in here is okay to be bent because the post office folded it in half. Ah, uh, yes, I remember this now. These are Yamaha play cards. There are sheet music, but they also have a magnetic strip that some Yamaha keyboards could read that contain digital copies of the music. I'll be showing these off in the next episode of 8-Bit Keys, so uh, thank you, Johan. Up next is a box from Philip Hulsey. Hmm, it's some kind of little cartridge. Okay, uh, well, it says Mattel Electronics in the back, so this is probably something for the Aquarius computer. So you'll probably be seeing this again when I cover that computer. Uh, thank you, Philip. Alright, next is a little package from Andrew Bailey. And here we go. I see a cassette. Here's a note. Okay, so the two cassette tapes were Zaxxon and Paintbrush for the Commodore 64. Ooh, Action Biker. That was one of my favorites as a kid. And several other Commodore 64 games. Uh, thank you, Andrew. Next up is a big old box from Chris Lazaga. Chris has already donated several high-profile machines to me in the past. Um, let's see what mysteries it contains. Looks like quite a few things packed in here. Okay, so this is a blank 8-inch floppy disk. I actually already had some of these, but it doesn't hurt to have another. Admittedly, I've never actually used one of these in a real system. Here's a PCMCI hard drive by IBM. And I think this is the main attraction. <laughs> Alright, let's get the bubble wrap off of here. Check that out. An Amiga 600 in pristine condition. And he sent along a European power converter. In here must be the power supply to the Amiga. I've been planning an Amiga episode for a while, so this will be a nice addition to that documentary. Okay, so I see why he included the power transformer. It looks like this has the UK style plug on it, so it must be a 240 volt system. I wonder if the Amiga is uh, a power unit as well. Probably is. There appears to be one other thing here. Okay. Um, I think this is an aftermarket accelerator card for the Amiga 600. It's probably a 68020 or 030 with what appears to be several megabytes of RAM. Uh, very nice. Uh, thank you, Chris. Up next is an even bigger box from Michael Smythe from Canada. According to the customs paper, it's a computer vintage. <laughs> And the first thing we have is a note. And what we have here is a Tandy Color Computer 3. Uh, this is great because it's the final piece of the puzzle I needed to do an episode on the Tandy Color Computer series, as I now have all of them. Uh, however, this one may need some Retrobrite by the look of it. Otherwise, it seems to be in good condition. And in that other box, there was a bunch of Color Computer cartridge games, uh, one of which caught my eye. This appears to be a fully licensed version of Tetris. Now, you don't see many licensed games for the Tandy machines, which is something I'll explain when the documentary comes along. Uh, so this is great. Uh, thank you very much, Michael. Next up, we have a box from... Who is this from? Oh, uh, Raymond Ricci. Looks like it's a CD-ROM drive. No idea why anyone would send me that. Uh, oh, I remember now. This is a label flash drive. Um, I think this was something we talked about last year. Uh, it's a competitor to the LightScribe, and I was planning on a video on that at some point. And it looks like there's a note here, too. Alright, well, uh, thank you, Raymond. Here's another small box from Andrew Harris. I like small boxes these days. <laughs> that, that means hopefully I'll have room for whatever's in there. Here's a note. Looks like there are TI-99 games inside. Here we go. Uh, these are some interesting ones. We have Cubert and Centipede and Star Trek. Uh, well, thank you, Andrew. Okay, next is a little padded envelope from Dan Spitzley. And what do we have here? Ah, a VIC-20 cartridge, the machine language monitor. Cool, I didn't have this, and I love VIC-20 stuff, so uh, nice. Uh, thank you, Dan. Next up is a big box that came a long way. <laughs> this is from Fergus Logan, and he shipped this all the way from the UK. 
Aha, if this manual is any indication, this is one of the rare Commodore 1551 disk drives. Well, let's get this thing out and have a look. The 1551 was mostly sold in Europe, and it was specifically designed for the Plus 4 and Commodore 16 computers because it uses a cartridge slot interface for high-speed data transfer. Looks like he sent a game too, 3D Pool. <laughs> However, uh, this says it's for IBM compatible, so it won't read in this drive. Of course, I can't even test this thing at the moment because uh, you'll notice it says it requires 240 volts on the back. But I think I can fix that in a later episode. Uh, thank you very much, Fergus. Okay, I have a big envelope here from China. Uh, the customs paperwork says it's an electronic game. Well, let's open it and see what it is. Interesting. Pocket Sprite. I remember this conversation. I think it's some kind of keychain sized game. It comes in a nice little box. Okay, it uh, looks like a little Game Boy. Wow, this thing is tiny. I mean, the screen is about the size of my thumbnail. Uh, looks to be powered by USB. Well, let's turn it on. Okay, it wants me to connect it to Wi-Fi and then open that IP address in my browser. Okay, I'll go do that right quick. Okay, long story short, it was super easy to upload some ROMs. Uh, looks like it will emulate a few different machines, including the Game Boy, so I put a few games on it. One thing that is obvious is that the screen doesn't even have the full resolution of the original Game Boy, but considering how small it is, you aren't likely to notice during casual gameplay. The buttons are a bit challenging to use. Ah, and I see another issue. The bottom of the screen is cut off some too. Still, not a huge deal. Uh, let's look at the menu here. You've got uh, volume brightness, and change ROM. Let's try another one. Okay, well, it's a neat little device, but admittedly too small for my tastes. Uh, just to give you a better idea of size, here it is compared to my iPhone 6. Next up, I have not one, but three boxes here, all from the same person. Uh, these are from Sean Hafees. Uh, let's start with a smaller one. Lots of things in here. Not even sure what some of this is. Moving on to the next box. Here's a keyboard. And here we go, an IBM PC Junior. And an extra top cover for some reason. Uh, very nice, I've been wanting one of these and uh, in the larger box is no surprise, it's a monitor. So here it is all set up. I thought I'd go ahead and see if it was working. Here's a bunch of spare parts that he also sent. Unfortunately, even though the computer appeared to be booting up, the monitor was just black. I tried the brightness and contrast knobs to no avail. Since the PC Junior also has a composite video output, I thought I could use that to at least test if the computer was producing a video signal. And it definitely does appear to be working. So I'm thinking maybe something came loose with the monitor during shipping as I just contacted Sean and he said it was working before he shipped it. I'm kind of paranoid with CRT so I'm wearing my high voltage gloves. I couldn't find anything loose, but eventually I just slapped the side of the monitor and the darn thing came on. Just an update here, I already featured this in my most recent video on the IBM PC Junior, so if you haven't seen it yet, go check out the repair. The next package is a funny looking shape, and it's from Noah Reyna. And he's right here in Dallas, Texas. He could have hand delivered this. Anyway, uh, let's see what's inside. Keep on being awesome. Well, thank you. Okay, yeah, these are some computer manuals I didn't have, and this appears to be some sort of music software. Uh, so um, here's the manual to the Commodore 128, and then the Apple II, which I certainly didn't have. So very nice. Uh, thank you, Noah. Here's another box. Uh, this one is from Analog Incorporated. Uh-oh, there's a black envelope. Doesn't that usually mean somebody you know has died? <laughs> Interesting. It's a box for Super Turrican Director's Cut. But uh, that's it. It's just the box. How odd. Okay, uh, well, there's two other boxes in here. This appears to be an analog Super NT, and apparently a wireless game controller. I think this is a Super Nintendo compatible gaming system. Uh, the box is very high quality. Yeah, here it is. Uh, this thing feels really nice. And on the back is an HDMI output. In fact, that appears to be its only output. That looks like an SD card slot. The bottom is nice and rubbery, and the whole thing has a good weight to it that uh, doesn't feel like cheap junk that clone consoles usually are. Well, uh, you'll probably see this in a future video too. Next up, this package is from The Future Was 8-Bit. I like the name. According to the customs information, there's a game and some parts inside. Here's a note. 
Looks like there are several things in here. This is apparently a blank VIC-20 cartridge. I guess you could put your own EEPROM in there. Ah, okay. And these are the cases for those blanks. And this appears to be an actual game. I love the design as it mimics the original design language for VIC-20 game boxes. Although, admittedly, I've never seen a yellow VIC-20 cartridge. It's called Cheese and Onion. So, uh, this is a brand new game for the VIC-20 and it's on cartridge. How cool is that? I can't wait to plug this in and see what it does. Um, I thought I'd just stick one of those little boards inside of one of the cases they sent and see what it looks like. Okay, well, here we go. Pretty neat. Okay, here's yet another package from Surge. It seems that he sends me something every month. And uh, last time it was a 3D printed case for the little ad-lib cards he makes. And this appears to be another such 3D printed case, only this is for the CVX-4, which is the Kovax clone. Uh, let me grab one of my CVX-4s and see how it fits. Very nice fit. This one doesn't use screws, you just have to snap it closed. Nice, it's a uh, it's nice tight fit and it leaves access to the dip switches and the audio output. Cool. Okay, 8-bit greetings inside. <laughs> uh, this comes from Melvin Zill from Germany. I thought it was just a letter, but I can feel something inside of the envelope. Yeah, there is a letter. Uh, but there's something else in here. Oh, yes. I know what this is. This is the little leaf for my clamshell that I got in a previous <laughs> unboxing episode. See, it goes right here. I could probably take care of this right now. Uh, first, let me clean out the hole with some alcohol. And then I'll use some of this plastic epoxy. You have to mix this stuff up. And here we go. I imagine it doesn't need much. Well, there we go. That's fixed. Uh, thank you, Melvin. Okay, next we have a little box from Casey Hill. And inside is a little note. This is apparently related to TRS-80 computers. Okay, it's a diagnostic cartridge. Uh, nice, thank you, Casey. And next up is a little envelope from Eli Goldberg. It reminds me of the TV show The Goldbergs. Anyone else here watch that? Nice handwriting, by the way. And inside we have... Oh, okay. Yeah, I've always wanted one of these. Uh, this is a double-sided cartridge for the Atari 2600. You can stick it in one direction and it's Spike's Peak. And the other side is Ghost Manor. I knew these existed, but I've never seen one in person. Cool, uh, thank you, Eli. Next up is a little box from Jacques Goodsmith. Okay, I remember this conversation now. This is another one of those Homebrew 6502 computers. I think this one can be configured to emulate more than one type of computer, though. I seem to recall it could do the Apple One and something else. Okay, it's called the L-Star Plus Revision 5. Well, I'll probably assemble this in a future video. Thank you, Jacques. Alright, here's a little package from Daniel Lint in Sweden. And according to the customs paper, it's a C64 interface, floppy disk, and manual. Hmm. Yeah, I think this is some sort of MIDI interface. Certainly an inventive way to pack this thing. It appears to have worked, as it isn't broken. So yeah, this is a MIDI interface. Uh, interesting that it has one in and three out. Um, I guess this must be the accompanying software. Yeah, and it's on a nice red floppy disk. And <laughs> neat. Uh, thank you, Daniel. And this is the last package of the month, which arrived on the last day of the month, so basically yesterday. And this is from Roland Noor, and it was shipped from the Netherlands. Looking at the custom sheets, it says there is a Commodore 64 inside. <laughs> now you might be wondering why on earth I'd need another one of those. Let's open it up. Okay, this is a neat way to package a C64. So, the truth is, there's nothing out of the ordinary about this computer, except that it's a PAL unit from Europe, and I don't currently have a PAL unit, and uh, I want to play Sam's Journey. So, hopefully I can get this one working with my existing power supply and such. Uh, we'll see. So, thank you, Roland, and that's the last package. Okay, well, February may be over, but March is already off to a pretty good start. I literally got these just a few minutes ago. Um, no idea what's in them. I guess you'll have to wait till April 1st to find out. But I did want to say one thing. There have been some comments uh, complaining about the unboxing videos, saying that they wanted me to do more premium content and stop wasting my time doing these unboxing videos. 
And the only thing I wanted to say about that is that I do film these throughout the month when the packages come in. And it only takes me usually one day at the end of the month to edit all this together and produce it. So I'm not really sacrificing any time away from my other content to make these. I mean, one day is nothing because most of my videos take five or six days to produce. So think of it as a freebie. And, you know, obviously nobody's forcing anybody to watch them. So uh, just think of it as bonus content. <laughs> uh, anyway, so that about wraps it up until um, next time. So thanks for watching.